do brush layering, uh, we found out that uh, the brush layers are horizontal inclusions into the slope. They provide slope stability. There's tensile strength to these, so if the slope tends to want to fail, it has to fail it at the cost of the tensile strength. If you put it in a, in a puddle of water and you let it sit like this, it'll grow roots down here and it'll grow stems. But if you tilt the branch slightly, you'll have bigger, bigger roots and bigger stems. Tilt it more, you have bigger stems and even bigger roots. So the moral of the story is to tilt these guys down as much as you can. Probably 10 degrees is the minimum for brush layering. We'd like these things dipping back into the slope about like that. They've got their buds sticking up. This part of the branch is going to be buried in soil. It'll have perfect opportunities to root. Each one of those roots will provide some additional geotechnical strength. These particular willows have been soaked for about uh, seven days now. We had them in a slough over there. They were cut and soaked. So this is about optimum. Uh, we like to put the willow branches down uh, if you have a geotechnical sort of landslide, you want to put about six branches per foot, about 18 to 20 branches per meter. However, in this area, we're not too worried about geotechnical stability. We're more worried about uh, trying to get willows established. So you can go as, as often as one every two feet or so. We have a little extra willow here. We have a little wet conditions. So we're gonna put down just a little bit extra. It's a little warm today. We don't wanna leave these guys out in the sun too long. In fact, I'm a little uh, anxious about getting these covered with some nice wet soil and getting them down there and kind of tucking them in, you know, tuck them in for the day. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of soil. I'm gonna push everything down and we're gonna come up one more layer of BioD, uh, the BioD block. We're gonna, we're gonna tie this area in right here using some D blocks. We're having trouble getting down into the ice. So we're gonna lay the D blocks out. We chose that because we can build a layer in here and anchor them down and the weight of the soil will hold them in place. We don't have to worry about staking. Then we're gonna take the other material that we have and build that wall up even higher and we'll use the, the rolls for that because we can run the stakes through our new fill. So that's kind of the plan. We'll see how that it shakes out. Amazing. Well, this becomes the problem. Right under here is ice. This is that saturated, the ice level here in May is right there. That might as well be bedrock. We can't dig into it. We can't get our stake into it. Unlike permafrost, this stuff will, uh, will eventually melt. By fall, it'll be melted. But right now, it's providing a tremendous impediment to us getting stakes in. This is one of the reasons probably some of these uh, past projects have failed because chances are they were built in the spring. We, they couldn't get the stakes in sufficiently. The, the specifications look like, well, you just put two by two stakes, drive them in, and uh, it's not that easy. Boy, that ice was hard. <laughs> I think those D blocks are going to work great because you don't have to worry about anchoring them. Yeah. The anchor is the is the coir netting. Maybe we should do is let this sit for the night, let it thaw out a little bit. We'll dig a little bit more. In the morning. A few people over here working on the uh, coir, getting the the D block in. We've got the D block cut already. Well, today we're gonna uh, we're gonna put a coir block in there, and we're gonna expand the wall here a bit. We'll put some more uh, coir rolls, another run high. And it looks like the rock section's pretty much done back there. So here's our 16-inch uh, our coir block. I'm gonna set this in and key it back into the bank there where Jeff has his little access road. It's about the way we want it there. Backfill in here, continue. Let's see if uh, one person in an excavator can install this one extremely talented excavator operator. Very good. We're going to uh, run one more 16D block right in here. 
That'll give you 12 inches over the top here. Then we're going to use a 12 inch coir roll and that'll bring it all kind of smooth. Before we set that down though, let's, I'm going to put a little, couple of brush layers in here. Okay. In here. These guys work really sweet. Almost uh, two people, you know, with an, one machine and one person could almost install these things. The way they're, they're laid back, you just build the terrace with the machine, lay the jute back there, or the coir back there, and then wrap it over and compact it. A little bit of willow. Uh, these are proving to be really constructible, and I think they're going to anchor really well, too. So go ahead and roll these flaps out, get them out of the way so you can kind of see. I'll bring you guys some fill and that'll help uh, set it in. There's the discovery again. Look at that tide drop in. Yeah. <laughs> Run of the coir netting, and uh, Jeff is proceeding to backfill over it. And we've got the, uh, the hose there also, and then we'll water the fill in. And then we'll start laying some sod in it like we're doing right here. So we can start laying a little bit of sod in here, in these areas. Get some sod pieced in there and get some sod growing in here. If it's a, if it's a thicker piece, put it in this low spot in here and it'll, it'll spread and grow. A little water, we're done. Love it. I think we rake that out a little bit and get a little bit of sod planted and Jeff can plant some seed in there. It's going to look good. Water it. It's looking dynamite, huh? So the blocks, uh, worked out really well. This is a really nice structure right here. We've got our brush layering, both one layer down there and one layer up here. If you remember, we kept the, the vegetation relatively high because we expect in uh, later in the spring, this is gonna get inundated with floods and we don't want the willows to die. Jeff's actually gained some bank in here by using the Coyer products. Well, you know what? Uh, Let's close this project up by uh, going down from the river. We can get the canoe. We'll go down in the canoe and we'll see how the project looks. So. Bird's eye view of our uh, coir wrap here. <clears throat> this is some of our D block, our D block, and our coir rolls. All right. Excellent, that looks good.